Hello again, everyone. This is Brother Gary Lee. I'm glad to be with you again. Uh, this will be our mini message for Sunday. And I'm going to be looking at some verses from Ezekiel. Now, I know that we've been studying Ezekiel uh, in uh, on our Wednesday Bible study. However, uh, I want us to look at some verses here uh, in, in a different uh, light because we do a, a kind of an in-depth study on Wednesday, but I think these verses are vital uh, for us to uh, acknowledge and look at uh, uh, in, from a, oh, a sermon type of uh, uh, delivery. Uh, we will go deeper uh, later on in our study in Ezekiel. I'm really looking forward to Ezekiel uh, 37, 38, and 39, uh, which uh, we're going to look at Ezekiel 37 a little bit, and then 38, 39 deal with the coming war with Russia. Uh, make no mistake about it. But today, uh, I want us to consider the valley of dry bones, Ezekiel 37. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, we thank you and we are grateful to you for the marvels of each and every day. We are so glad, Lord, that you give us yet another day. And we rejoice. We rejoice in your son, Jesus. And we uh, are filled with your spirit and, and happiness, knowing that he has delivered us from the stranglehold of evil. And Lord, being now your children, we want to uh, glorify you. We want to learn a little more about you. And, and we want to see maybe how it, it, it applies in our lives and in uh, the world in which we live. So bless us now, please, with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, Ezekiel 37 talks about the valley of dry bones. I remember years ago, I preached a sermon on the, the different bones. <laughs> stupid sermon probably but there was the wishbone uh, uh, the the funny bone and uh, you know all kinds of things like that but and, you know it's more relevant than silliness like that uh, this here is uh, something that many of you have witnessed your with your very own eyes uh, at least in the news uh, media and uh, you have experienced it in your lifetime, and it's still fresh in your memory, and, and it should be, I hope, uh, to uh, new generations uh, that they would be aware of it. Uh, now, I noticed uh, that uh, in the video here, <laughs> there's a glare on my glasses, and it's not from up here in spite of what people may think. Uh, so I'm going to take my glasses off. I have uh, right beside the uh, uh, the video, I have uh, the scriptures. So it makes it uh, a, a little easier than holding the Bible up here and flipping pages, okay? So let's uh, uh, begin now in looking at what the Lord has to say in chapter 37 of Ezekiel. We'll try it without the glasses first. And then uh, if I can't make it, then uh, we'll get them back on. All right. Verse 1, it says, The hand of the Lord was upon me. You know, when I came to Jesus, the hand of the Lord was upon me. Uh, he he reached down and touched my very soul, 
and he led me into his grace by trusting in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Now, what a wonderful hand that is. It's, it's, it's a loving hand. It's a kind hand. It's a merciful hand, hand isn't it? Uh, it, it? It is one uh, that uh, is uh, yet with us today as God reaches down and blesses us from day to day. Uh, Natalie and I were talking about it uh, recently and, and how in our uh, lives, and especially since we've been married, that the hand of the Lord has been upon us and, and he has uh, blessed us in ways that we never expected and, and he continues to do so until he takes us home. And then that's the ultimate blessing, isn't it? And I pray that you have that blessing to come. Uh, now, the hand of the Lord can be upon you for different reasons. The one I just mentioned has to do with uh, uh, the hand of the Lord in blessing. But there is the hand of the Lord in curse, the hand of the Lord in chastisement, the hand of the Lord in wrath, the hand of the Lord in judgment, the hand of the Lord uh, in a way that you never want to have it happen uh, to you or anybody. And you know, there's two sides: the good and the and and uh, in God's grace, and then there is uh, God is good. But uh, we all deserve this other hand that is uh, uh, not so uh, beneficial. Let's put it that way. Amen. Now, the third way is the hand of the Lord can be upon you in a very specific and ministerial way. Uh, the hand of the Lord may be upon you to, to minister to your loved one, a family member, a friend, uh, or even a stranger. I know that's happened to me numerous times at the, in, the, in the grocery store. I just tell you the truth. That's the best place to sometimes to serve the Lord uh, to, to as you're going through the checkout or waiting for the checkout. It's, it's just a marvelous time to, to testify, you know. Uh, but the hand of the Lord can be upon you in the spirit. Okay. By grace, the hand. Uh, by judgment, the hand. And then the spirit, which enables us to do his will and his bidding. Now, he said the hand of the Lord it was upon him. Uh, now, he, he was a, a believer, obviously, but now it was upon him in a very special way. And he says, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord. In the spirit of the Lord. What does he mean when he says he brought him out? He brought him out from the world. He brought him out from the burdens of everyday life. He brought him out from the turmoil and the darkness that was in the world all around him. He brought him out and by the spirit and set him in a spiritual place where he could communicate him uh, something that was most unusual. It says he sent me down in the middle of the valley. <laughs> You know, uh, you know, we think of the lily of the valley, and I've been in uh, uh, many places that had valleys, uh, especially in, in Tennessee. Uh, there are hillsides, and then there are the valleys, you know, the bottom country and the, and the fertile places of, of the earth. And uh, he, he set him, however, in a different kind of valley. This valley... He says it was full of bones, 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 dry bones, dead bones, ready to, of no use, you know, 
bones uh, are necessary for life uh, for a human being. Uh, without our bones, we'd be a jellyfish. <laughs> Some people have jellyfish hearts, <laughs> but uh, that's another sermon. But uh, we, you know, we gotta have bones. You know, live bones, uh, uh, bones that are connected, bones that are connected, not one to another, just one to another, but but to, to flesh and blood, uh, bones that are alive. But this valley was different. It was a valley of dry bones. In verse 2, he says, He led me around among them. And behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley. And behold, they were not just dry. They were very dry. He wanted Ezekiel to realize that all the bones, every one of them, were lifeless, lifeless. They weren't just dry. Uh, they were very dry, very dry, lifeless. And he said to me in verse three, son of man, can these bones, uh, no, excuse me, son of man, can these bones live? Now, uh, Normally, uh, if we if we have, have dug up some old bones in the yard or something, uh, and and, uh, and uh, said to the person that might be next to us, "Can these bones live?" Uh, they say, "You're crazy." Of course, they can't live. They're dead. They're they're dead, dry bones. But uh, he's. God said to him, can these bones live? Now, Ezekiel answered in a very uh, obviously uh, a wise way, I think. He says, oh, Lord God. He's speaking to the, to the creator. Oh, Lord God, you know. You know. Not, hey, you know. No, it was, you know. You know, in other words, he was saying, if it be thy will, you know, you know, if you want them to or not. In verse four, then he said to me, prophecy, prophecy over these bones. And here's what I want you to say to them. Oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Now, of course, he was uh, uh, saying a prophecy this to these dry bones on the valley floor, uh, but he says the, the, the same thing today. There are, a lot of, there are a lot of people walking around with dead, dry bones. And he's saying the same thing. Hear the word of the Lord. Listen. You know, how can you not hear? The, you know, how can you not hear the word of the Lord? I, that amazes me. You say, well, they don't go to church and nobody tells them. Oh, I went out this morning. I go out at sunup and right after sunup. And, and the, this morning, uh, it's it's in the 80s today. But this morning out there, the the sun's shining and the, the little birds are, are making their noise, their music. And, and uh <laughs> you know, how can you not hear the word of God? And you know, how does this happen? But by a great creator. Uh, this is not uh, accident. This is not circumstance, you know. Uh, it is by the, the word of God that all things exist. 
It is by his precious word. It is by his word that we're saved. It is by his word that we're able to endure. It is by his word that we go to heaven. It is by his word who we're with the Lord for eternity. All of creation shouts, the Lord God is alive. You know, just the other day, I think, uh, they uh, celebrated uh, most of the world celebrated uh, Earth Day, you know, Planet Earth Day, and, and that the Lord's been good to us with this planet, and uh, we we do need to respect it and honor the Lord in it, uh, uh, but we are not to worship it. And I know people that that worship the Earth more than they worship any anyone else uh there some of them are called tree huggers you ever hear of a tree hugger i knew a tree hugger once went to church on sunday and worshiped the the environment on monday through saturday and sunday afternoon too probably but uh, we're not to worship the world the world will pass away but the word endures forever all right he says uh, uh prophecy over these bones and say to them oh dry bones hear not with your physical ears with your spiritual ears these bones were representative you see i know he used the the illustration of bones, but they were very representative of a certain people. And he goes on and and, and he says uh, uh, in verse, uh, let's say we're at verse five, thus says the Lord God. Now, you know, I can say and preach anything, uh, but uh, what a thrill it is to preach the word of God, because I can always say, Thus says the word of God. It's always correct. He says, uh, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, Thus says the Lord God to these bones. He's addressing the dead dry bones. Behold, I will cause breath. <laughs> excuse me. To enter you and you shall live. You know, you say, well, that's crazy. Well, hmm, how did Adam come to life? God breathed on him. God breathed through him. God, with God, nothing is impossible. Say to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. Here they've been lying on that valley floor for uh, goodness knows how many years, and they were dead. They were worthless. They were gone. Uh, they had no life in them. But God says, I'll cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. <laughs> I dare say that at that very moment, the bones started rattling. You know, you heard them, the song shake, rattle, and roll. It. They got it from that. The bones started shaking and rattling when God said such a thing as this. Look at verse 6. I think I can see it. I don't have my glasses on again. Here's what it says. I will lay sinews upon you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So what did he say? He's going to put these bones together. And they're going to be knit together with flesh and blood. Uh, they're going to have muscle. They're going to have organs. They're going to have uh, all things necessary 
they have the one most important thing necessary, which is the breath of God. And he says, I'm going to breathe in you, not on you, in you. And you shall live, you know. The only way you're going to live, my friends, I mean really live, is for God to breathe in you with his Holy Spirit. Oh, you know, he's available. He's right there. And he says, and you shall live. Oh. And you shall know that I am the Lord. You know, he's God, but he's Lord. He is the all-powerful, the all-magnificent, the only holy, the only true God there has ever been. He says, when I do this to these bones and they come back to life, I'm going to put eyeballs in their eye sockets, going to put uh, ears on the side of their head. He's going to breathe the breath in, of life in them. He's going to then say, you shall know that I am the Lord. Isn't that good? You, you know, when when I became a Christian. You know what happened? At that moment, I knew that he was the Lord. There was no doubting in my mind. Now, later on, when Satan attacks, you know, he'll put doubt there. But you know, how do you know? You know, because you know, because you know. Hallelujah. <laughs> You'll know that I am the Lord. Verse 7. So I prophesied. This is Ezekiel. He did as he told. He was told. He prophesied. As I was commanded. And as I prophesied. Well, let's just stop there. There are a lot of people today. That say that they prophesy. And. Uh, <sighs> That's, I'll let God be the judge. I know this much. When you declare the word of God, you are prophesying his word. And there should be nothing added to it, nor taken away from it by those who would claim to prophesy today. I'll leave it at that. He says, I prophesied, and he did what? He did as he was told. He did as he was commanded. And because he was blessed, we are blessed. And the, oh, isn't this good? And he says, as I prophesied, there was a sound, a sound. And, and behold, a rattling. Remember that shake, rattling, roll? I told you it was coming. A rattling. And the bones came together, bone. To its bone. Ooh, I'm all shook up. <laughs> That's good. I looked and behold, there were sinews on them and flesh come upon them and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Are you with me still? Verse nine, prophesy son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. And I will stop right there for a moment. He did as he was told, and they came to life. This represents the people of God, the Jewish nation, they died, they were dead for almost 2,000 years, lifeless, of no use. And then God 
breathed on them and brought them together, those dead bones. And in 1948, the nation Israel was born after 2,000 years of lying dead on the valley floor. God breathed on them. He still loved them. And he had use for them in his great plan of eternity. Israel, surrounded by enemies, at every hand, a hundred to one. They had no real military uh, training. They had no uh, great uh, uh, weaponry. Uh, they were surrounded though, by those who hated them simply because they were the people of God. And he was bringing them back to life and nothing was going to stop it. And they fought a war and won victoriously. Then in 67, they tried to kill Israel again. And what happened? <laughs> in no time at all, Israel just put them in a hole. He Israel, by the grace of God, God said you're going to live, and they live to this very day. Israel, the people of God. Now, I don't know for sure what his immediate plans are for Israel, but I do know they have a prominent place in prophetic history, and we shall see. Are you dead? Are you useless? Are you just like a bag of dry bones? If so, turn to Jesus. Believe on him and receive his Holy Spirit that you might live and live abundantly, have purpose, no matter what your age might be, God has a purpose for your life. No matter what your condition, God has a purpose for you. Why would you die? Why won't you live? Father, in the name of Jesus, may all who hear my voice live. And being alive, may they share the grace that they themselves have received. Bless them. In Christ's name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, my dear friends. I look forward to talking to you again.